Shed Wars. Shed Wars 21. This is my first Shed Wars video. Well, not counting my entry video. But this is the first one of the season. I have been waiting for this day to be able to post this video. I thought what I'd make my first video about is about planning. Planning is important, especially when you're gardening. If you don't, if you fail to plan, it's just like planning to fail. So it's important to plan. For my planning, I wanted to start out with a baseline so that we, as the summer, the spring and summer passes by, we can see how my garden is growing. My name is Darlene, and this is Darlene's Garden Channel, and I am participating in Shed Wars 21. I live in the Northern Hemisphere in Oregon, Northeast Oregon. People think of Oregon as the green state because it rains a lot. Not here. We live on the desert side of Oregon. If you look behind me, you see my yard. Of course, it's beautiful. My husband loves to keep his grass. I'm trying to point at the right thing. <laughs> he loves to keep his grass green. So I have to beg spots to put my garden. We live in town, in a very small town, only somewhere, I think we have about 1,200 residents, somewhere in that neighborhood. Our elevation is about 1,700 feet. We live within 15 miles of a, a, a mountain range called the Blue Mountains. In the summer, it gets very hot in the 90s and 100s. And in the winter, it has the potential of being very cold. Well, not very, very cold, but like in the 20s and 30s, once in a while we get down in the teens. In fact, the last couple of weeks, we've been in the 20s every night. But up in the 50s, almost 60, there was one day we almost hit 70 during the day. I had, okay, let me start with my baseline. So I'm going to show you what I've got, where I'm starting, and what I'm planning. Remember, I said planning was key. Last year, go around. Last year, my garden beds went from east to west. This year, I turned them around and we're going from north to south. I put plastic on my beds that had things that I wanted to winter over, mainly this area right here. And basically everything you see right here, wintered over. Yep. So I'm starting with some plants already here. And I will soon be harvesting at least some of those leaves. I understand in Shed Wars, I need to be weighing everything I harvest. I don't have anything to weigh them with. I have a scales that you weigh human pe human beings on. So I don't I don't think that will work. I may have to invest in a scale. Um, either that, or I can just show you what I harvest, and not worry about winning the competition because it won't weigh anything. 
we'll see how it goes. That's one thing I need to plan to do is to purchase a kitchen scale. So my planning for right here, what I've started out with in this little this little area right there, I planted just yesterday some asparagus. I got some asparagus the roots, crowns, whatever you call them, and planted right in, right in there. And then I have some that I started from seed that I planted right there. Over here behind these brassicas, there are some asparaguses, asparagi, Ooh, however you say that, that I've had for a couple of years. They haven't traditionally done well. So I think they'll do better right here than they do back there because that's, the ground is real compact back here, whereas over here it's loose and uh, drains better. So I'm planning as I go along to plant more perennials in this area. And I planted some onions right in here and some what you see right down here, those are leeks actually. So perennials and then the onions and leeks in this area. In this area, I've got a few things that wintered over. Some cat mint and something cabbage -y. That one looks like it might be a Swiss chard. And so is that one. Over there I planted just yesterday, but I had started it in the house. That's a comfrey and it's the Bocking 14. So I believe that one is not invasive like some comfrey can be. Over here I have a plant that wintered over and that I believe is a stinging nettle. And I planted these. And I think I believe this is also Swiss chard. I planted last fall as I was preparing for my hoping it would winter over. These lettuce and peas I just planted the other day. Over here last year, I had an artichoke plant and it was getting big and beautiful, but it never did make any artichokes. And then winter came and even though I had it covered up, it disappeared on me. I don't think it survived the winter. I see no evidence of it coming back. So right down here, I started this indoors and just planted it out yesterday, an artichoke plant, because I want some artichokes. Hopefully I've got it out early enough this time that it will actually make some artichokes. This cabbage tree, the very first year I had it here, I made some little cabbage heads. This is this, believe it or not, it's third year being here. As long as it's not dead, I'm leaving it here. So I call it my cabbage tree. And I have kale that I planted last year. That's still surviving and calendula flowers. So my my plans for this area, I'm going to add more compost and, and dirt and everything right in here and over there. And in here and get some more things planted. Oh, and when it gets warm enough for tomatoes, which I have started inside, I'm going to spread them out in this area and this area. Along in here, last year when everything was going the other direction and for about, ugh, as long as I've had a garden out here, five or six years, strawberry plants. Well, they were looking a little bit poorly, I think is the word. So I dug them up and planted them in a different spot and they look way better than they did. So we're starting out with 
strawberry plants. My herbs right here, this is about the fourth year for them. Part of my planning is planning where to put all my tchotchkes because it's important for me to have a beautiful garden as well as a bountiful garden. That's also part of my planning procedure. What else am I starting with? Well, in here I have some daisies and some other flowers and some mint and uh, hookera and some iris that are all perennials. And in this kind of barren area, I'm going to add I haven't decided what yet, but I'll decide, and that will be part of my, part of my harvest is having pollinators, flowers that help the bees come and help my garden. This is my compost pile. It needs to be turned but I'm old and they don't have manpower, the woman power to do it. So it's a slow compost and there's a lot of it here, but I'm gonna use a lot of this for mulch and hopefully down at the bottom there will be actual compost. I know last year there was. Here I have a row of garlic that I started from garlics that I grew last year. And these are cabbage brassicas of some sort, I think, cabbage, cabbage or kale. Once, I don't know, they all taste the same to me. And I broke down and purchased some garlic from a seed, a garlic place where you just buy garlics. And they all, it looks like they all came up and are looking good. So I will be harvesting garlic probably midsummer. Last year I had corn in this area, and this year I'm going to plant potatoes. I haven't purchased my seed potatoes yet. I'm hoping that my local, my local farm store will have some seed potatoes that I can plant. If not, I'll go to the grocery store and buy some organic potatoes and start my own, but I prefer to buy the seed potatoes of a little more choice on what kind of potato I want to grow. I have several blueberry bushes in here and I will have some blueberries. I just have my bushes are small and I kind of wanted every year to buy one more bush. I haven't decided yet whether I will add another bush to this or not. This whole area is what I call the mound. I have some perennials here coming up, tulips and daffodils and what have you. I'm hoping to plant in this bucket my sweet potato slips as soon as it gets warm enough to do that. I have them starting in the house already. And I'm hoping to plant my corn over in this area, right in here, and then some tomatoes and, uh, and peppers and what have you in that area, and get this filled up with those summer plants as well as planting more perennials, mostly flowers, most likely, so that the older I get, the less energy I have for gardening, but I want a pretty garden. So if I get perennials going, that will mean that I have less work in future years. This is a ground cover. I've got irises, catnip, butterfly bush and I just planted just a couple days ago a hydrangea it's one of those big purple well it could be pink pink or purple 
It showed it as purple in the package. Uh, here, there we go. And more perennial flowers. And I may plant, plant some more. This area gets a little more shade than that area back there I said the corn and tomatoes. So some more shade loving plants. As you can tell, spring is coming, my daffodils. This, these always bloom first because they think they get a little more sun right here, right against the garage. So we're coming over here to the other side of the house. And I'll show you what I've got here. These are raspberries. Okay, and so part of my planning here, as soon as they start greening up, and I can tell which canes are this year's canes that will have berries and which ones are last year's that are just dead. I will pull out all the old ones. Some people do that in the fall. I have a hard time telling which is which. So my go-to for the last several years is to wait until it's really obvious which ones need to be pulled out and which ones are keepers. Over here we have a clump of blackberries. Last year we got 24 pints of berries off of these bushes. And it's just one big clump of bushes here. And I also have grapes, which for the very first time this year I, I pruned. So hopefully that makes a difference. The other thing I usually plant in here is sunflowers. And last year I also planted some zinnias. So I will probably do the same again with flowers. So that's my plan for this area. Okay, I have one more thing to show you before I sit down and talk to you about planning and the things that I'm going to be teaching you during the spring and summer. These are my worms. I have two worm beds. One of the things I'm going to be doing soon, and it'll be within the next couple of weeks, no doubt, is taking worms out of both of these and putting them in a separate container and extracting all of the yummy, well, not yummy to me as a human, but definitely yummy to my plants. <laughs> uh, worm poop. And so that will be part of what I will be teaching you about this year. So basically that's where I'm starting. You've seen everything that I've got going on. Oh, I've got a few other areas, but they were not major. And I may or may not have things growing in those other areas. If I do, they'll be part of what I show you. My plan is to tell you, to teach you how to start transplant and grow the things that I grow in my garden and how to harvest them, what to do with them after you've harvested them. So some things will include my kitchen as I teach you the whys of why we even try to garden. I'm a retired school teacher, so I love teaching about things. And that's right up the alley of Shed Wars 21. It's a collaboration of folks like some of them have smaller gardens than mine. Some of them are full-blown full farms. Some of them are market gardeners. Everything from soup to nuts. Well, from plants to nuts, maybe. <laughs> 
we're all here to to show you what we do and to teach you how we do it. There's so many different ways to garden. No one way is right. No one way is wrong. At, but it's really fun to share with each other in this community the ways that we do things. We learn from each other. We grow from each other. We grow as our food grows. The goal is to grow. Will it grow? Yes, indeedy. It certainly will. The more work we put into it, hopefully the more successful we are. A lot of that depends on a lot of things. The weather, the time we put into it. Some people are going to be expert at creating their videos. Other people will be expert at the way they teach. Others will be expert at how their food grows. I'll tell you right now, mine tends to grow small and slow. Right now it's too cold to put in a lot of my plants. It's warm enough in the daytime, but the nighttime gets too cold. And if the last few years is any indication, we go right from it being too cold to it being too hot. I am in zone 6B, depending on which chart to look at, because when I put in my zip code, it takes me to the neighboring city, which is 10 miles away. And their demographics are a little bit different there as far as the lay of the land and how close they are to the mountains. But if I plug in the zip code of the town on the other side of me, they get way colder than me because they're closer to foothills than I am. So it just all depends. I'm anxious as the Shed Wars collaboration gets going to get right into the meat of things and show you what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, and teach you how to do it too. So I'll wrap this video up and I will look forward to seeing you on my next Shed Wars 21 video. And in the meantime, you can just go to my regular channel and look at my regular videos. I will be making them all along. I'll make more of them than I do the Shed War videos because I'm only required to do at least two videos per month for Shed Wars. I may do more than that depending on what's going on. But I'll make my regular videos also. Some things will overlap. You'll see some things in my regular videos that you saw in my Shed Wars videos and vice versa, versa versa, vice versa. <laughs> okay. I'll see you in my next Shed War video coming along pretty soon here. And if you're another Shed War person and you're watching my video, <sighs> If you're on the same team I'm on, will it grow? Yes, yes, indeedy, it will. And for those people on the woodcutters team, ooh, yours isn't going to grow. Not at all. Well, yeah, it probably will. <laughs> It'll be fun watching both teams as we compete for the best gardens. Well, I'll blab on and on and on. So I'm just going to zip it, lock it, and stop talking <laughs> so that we can go on to the next video. Bye.